Hey everyone, today we're looking at the worst iridescent killer add-ons. That kind of need a change, and also suggesting some changes. Let's get into it. Starting off, we have the Obsidian Goblet for Pyramid Head. This add-on is so strange. This add-on makes it so whenever you walk on your Rites of Judgment trails, you become undetectable. This sounds pretty okay until you realize just how much this restricts you. Walking only on your trails means you have to not only place those trails to begin with, but also actively need to use that same pathing in the same way, in the next minute or so before they disappear. Also, the trails themselves can't even be that long. The whole setup and application just feels like such a waste of time for the potential minimal payoff of maybe a surprise attack. You'll jump scare a few survivors now and then, but that's about it. Another issue is that if you're trying to use your trails for yourself, they likely aren't in a good spot to torment survivors. This means you don't get killer instinct much, and generally you're going to get less cages too. This add-on can actually be kind of decent on indoor maps, and when it does get working, it can pay off. Off, although not by that much. It sucks too because this add-on has a really cool concept. It's an ability perfectly fine for maybe a green add-on, but for an iridescent, no way. My suggested change would be to make it so when you plant your knife in the ground, all of its sounds, and the sound of the trails you create, are completely silent. Further, you become undetectable. This would allow for some really sneaky trail placements, and also allow for some very unexpected punishment of the damned attacks, devoid of their sound cue, leaving the survivors to go purely off of visuals. That way it would work on loops too, and actually make them a lot more scary. I think that could be cool. Moving on to Black Box. This this add-on currently blocks the exit gates after they've been opened for 15 seconds. That's it. It's kind of like a mini Blood Warden at the end of the match. However, and this is a big however, this only activates if the survivors are asleep. So not only is it a very short 15 seconds, but there's a prerequisite that you don't have much control over. This is so situational. You basically don't have an add-on for most of the trial. For the trade-off of 15 seconds to maybe down one more survivor. Even then, it's unlikely. I don't even hate this add-on really. Sure, it's very situational, but the effect is pretty cool, having a mini Blood Warden. I could see it being a fun green, or even a quirky purple add-on. A new iridescent add-on, and something I think would be cool as an iridescent add-on, is a silent teleport. An add-on that hides your projection when teleporting to a generator, allowing for some sneaky gen grabs and sudden appearances. Another idea would be to utilize Freddy's invisibility mechanic. Maybe something really crazy like, when within 4 meters of the nightmare, and in the dream world, he is completely completely invisible. This would let long loops still be viable, but would make short loops near impossible and really scary. It could be countered by waking up, but would be extremely strong when asleep. Next up we have Soldier's Putty for the Huntress. This is another add-on that I like the concept of, but it just categorically should not be iridescent. It could maybe be a yellow or green. This add-on bumps your base movement speed up to 4.6 meters per second from 4.4 meters per second when you have no hatchets. This makes you the regular movement speed, basically, when you have no hatchets left. It is helpful, but equally, if you're a competent huntress, you basically should never be low on hatchets. And if you are, you're going to go and reload straight away, getting a few seconds of usage out of this putty at most. In rare occasions, you can use the extra speed to normally chase someone, but this largely just isn't worth it, and you can do this even with the 4.4 movement. Yeah, it's a good little buff in a specific area, but more fitting to be yellow or maybe green. I feel like Huntress needs a completely new iridescent add-on. Here's my suggestion. It's another kind of weird one. <laughs> You start the game with 50 hatchets, however you can no longer reload your hatchets at lockers, basically allowing you to continually throw hatchets without the need to reload. Once all hatchets are used, your movement speed increases to 4.6 meters per second. Let me know what you think of that one. Iridescent Umbrella Badge for the Nemesis is an add-on I don't quite understand. This add-on will make survivors exposed for 60 seconds after they use a vaccine. That's it. Now, the main issue with this is that the times when survivors 
survivors are using a vaccine is typically when they are away from danger, and away from you as the killer. Meaning even if you had another add-on to notify you of the use of a vaccine, by the time you reach the survivor who did use that vaccine, you've got maybe 30 seconds and they're probably long gone. On the rare occasion somebody does use one in front of you, they're just gonna start dropping everything. Your tentacle can't insta-down either, so it just doesn't help really. At most, this add-on gives you a few drop pallets for free. At worst, it does literally nothing. Bear in mind too that naturally there's only four vaccines that spawn, one for each survivor essentially. So at most, this iridescent add-on is providing four fairly random instances of exposed. That just isn't good. One thing I would love to see for Nemesis, especially for an iridescent, that I think could be really fun, is just an extra zombie. This add-on could just spawn an additional zombie into the trial, and potentially even bump their speed a bit. That would be my change, just a complete rework. Renjiro's Bloody Glove is a highly counterproductive add-on that encourages you to not use your Blood Fury. This add-on for the Oni will reveal survivors to you with auras whenever they step into Blood Orbs. However, when they do this, they also consume the Blood Orb. This means that ideally you don't want to go into Blood Fury, as it despawns the Blood Orbs, and you don't get the info from Renjiro's. So, this add-on makes you into an M1 Oni with a bit more information. This add-on is a little like Waterlog Shoe for the Hag. In in the way that it basically removes a whole aspect of gameplay. In Oni's case, using your Blood Fury can often be punishing more so than helpful with this add-on. This add-on works against itself in this case. As an iridescent add-on, I think it's fine to nerf a certain aspect of the killer's power, if it means you buff another part by a huge amount. For example, Tuft of Hair for Myers. Sure it takes longer to stalk, but you get infinite tier 3. It takes longer to achieve tier 3, but it's also very strong once you get there. Also, Oni's most enjoyable aspect is his Blood Fury. This add-on should be the brown meme add-on at the very bottom of his kit. To be honest, both Renjiro's and the Iridescent Crest should be replaced with the Scalp Top Knot and either Lion Fang or Splintered Hull. Except, you know, spice them up a bit. Next, I thought we'd cover both of the artist's add-ons, Iridescent Feather and Garden of Rot. These are both dreadful. Iridescent Feather makes you become undetectable after you fire all of your crows. Garden of Rot exposes survivors for 4 seconds after they repel crows. 4 seconds is nothing at all, and when someone repels crows, 99% of the time you are not in range of them, and they'll be either looking for a window or a pallet or something, instead of being worried about the crows if you're in that proximity anyway. I don't really understand the point of these add-ons. They give such niche, largely useless, situationally helpful effects. I think the better effect for Garden of Rot would be to make it so when swarmed, a survivor becomes exposed until they get rid of the swarm. This giving them the option to repel and let you catch up, or leave the crows there and allow you to damage them from a distance with additional crows. Iridescent Feather I feel should maybe be be changed out for the severed hands, that's already a very solid add-on, and would work really well with the altered Garden of Rot. Hellshire Iron is an add-on that makes your terror radius disappear after hitting someone as Deathslinger with the spear gun. This undetectable status then remains for 10 seconds. This is really weird. After hitting someone with this and becoming undetectable, the survivor you hit is going to get a speed boost, allowing them to essentially negate any use of undetectable you may get. Then if you down them with this undetectable hit, it doesn't do anything because all you're gonna do is pick them up then hook them. Your best option to make the most of this is to hit a survivor, then try to find another within the next 10 seconds whilst undetectable. That just isn't really a viable strategy though, and the 10 seconds probably won't be that long anyway, with 2 or 3 being taken up by your hit cooldown. As a ranged killer, you really don't need to be that stealthy either. You have range. You don't need the element of surprise so much. The way I'd change this is potentially making it into more of a dark devotion effect, applying your terror radius onto the survivor, allowing you to then walk away and go find someone else, or continue chasing, with them confused 
confused by the constant loud heartbeat. Even with this change, it should still be like a purple at most. Ghostface caught on tape is another iridescent add-on that just like nerfs you. This add-on allows you to mark survivors when leaning one second faster, but it takes 0.75 seconds longer when not leaning. This requires you to really lean into the whole always leaning thing, which just isn't always possible. Marking from cover is already really fast, so this one second isn't much of an improvement. Also, most of the time you want to 99 a survivor, and then go hit them once you can guarantee a down. Having this 0.75 reduction makes it just a bit harder to do this. Not by much, but it does. This trade-off just isn't worth it. This add-on can vaguely work to your favour if you abuse the reveal mechanic, and play very fast with how you stalk. You do have to be very aggressive and keep a momentum though, which I feel can be quite hard. My change to this would be, and this is going to sound really overpowered but hear me out, when you mark a survivor, they don't get alerted that they've been fully marked. They become exposed, but they can't tell. The only way they can tell is by revealing you. If not though, you can mark them, sneak in and down them, with exposed then popping up as you down them. A bit like how Noed kind of appears out of nowhere. So it's kind of like an immersed ghost face. I think that's a cool idea, and would make for even more scary ghosty moments. Finally, I want to briefly look at Red Moss for the Demogorgon. This add-on makes your portals far stealthier. It makes the sounds made when emerging from a portal silent. It also increases your portal emerging time by 15%. Finally, it increases the undetectable status effect duration by 8 seconds when emerging from a portal. Not bad. It's definitely not the worst iridescent. The main issue I have with Red Moss is that I don't think it does quite enough with its undetectable effects alone to warrant being iridescent still. Both of Demo's iridescent add-ons focus on its portals, and both are just very average. My suggestion, therefore, would be to combine Red Moss with the effects of Demo's other average iridescent add-on, Lepro's Lichen. This add-on lets you see the auras of survivors whilst traversing through a portal, and for 3 seconds upon emerging. I think these two combined would make a really good iridescent add-on, providing stealth and information, pairing together to let you stealthily approach survivors you've just seen, buffing your portals considerably. Then a second iridescent add-on could be introduced to focus on the shred ability. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop any ideas for changes that you have for these add-ons, or any iridescent add-ons that you think are worse than the ones I listed, down below. Thanks, and goodbye.